All right, guys, so this build right here, um, it's something I wanted to try something a little different where instead of just hovering the whole time, I wanted to try something a little different for like solo play where you stay hovering at a low, um, like low off the ground, very close to your enemy so you can land all eight shots of your Radiant Fortress. Um, this whole build is revolving around the Radiant Fortress. So just so we can see what Radiant Fortress is. Um, luckily for me, I got the legendary one. But if you read the yellow text, it says hitting eight shots in a single burst recharges shields by 35%. So if you hold the, the shoot button R2, since I'm on PlayStation, if you hold R2, the um, aim will get smaller. So your bullets will be a lot uh, more um, like close. So um, all, bullet, all eight bullets will hit as long as you're close, right? So I have um, weapon 225% damage and then my shield 80% max, which is great, right? So that's for the Radiant Fortress. You need this gun to even have this build, technically. Um, I put uh, Vasa Surprise here. Um, reason being, you are close, so having to be able to do a melee hit and gain 25% ammo in the magazine, I still have to try it to see if it works, but I'm pretty sure it does work with the uh, Radiant Fortress. So you melee hit with Vasa Surprise out, you go back to Radiant Fortress, and you'll have... 25% um, of your of your clip in there um, also the main reason I also picked it even if that yellow text doesn't work I like having the plus 75% max shield um, and the ammo drop rate and repair rate on um, the 18% drop rate is nice so when you are up close you're picking up all this um, you know the, the little health um, globes that fall armor plus 15% max is nice but chances are you're not going to even get out of your shield because you're just going to be doing so much damage with the shotgun and getting 35% shield back every time you hit all eight shots that you're not going to make it to your green bar. Then for our focus seal, I went with um, Burning Orb or 10,000 Suns. I like this one. Uh, let me see. So yeah, this one, I would like something that has shield on it. But I went with this one just because it goes very nice with um, with my other seal that I'm using. So my second seal would be Winter's Wrath. So here, um, I, I like that 18% pickup radius. So while you are hovering low to the ground, you're still picking up those globes. Um, and the R1, which is the 10,000 suns, will have more um, damage. So that's nice. Once again, you do want plus shield on here. Over here, we have Amulet of Winter. Increase ice damage by 5% and ice effects by 5%. This is nice because while you're hovering, you freeze everyone. And now your weapon, which is your shotgun, is doing 40% more damage for 20 seconds. Um, support plus 25, I mean plus 20% speed. So that's nice. Mark of Clarity, increase elemental damage resistance. This one's huge right here because it increases it by 35%. So you could be up close and you'll have damage reduction to like uh, Titan's uh, fire and, you know, just the Dominion's ice, things like that. But then clearing a status restores 20% armor. And this, this can occur every 10 seconds, right? So why that's nice is, once again, we went with 10,000 suns over here, right? So, or, or over here, Winter's Wrath. So if, if I'm on, if I'm frozen... I can use 10,000 suns to unfreeze myself or to unfreeze one of my teammates. Same thing with uh, Winter's Wrath. If I'm on fire, like if I'm going against a Titan, catches on fire, I could put Winter's Wrath on myself and I'll take away the fire. So that automatically right there, by using that, I um, I use a clearing a status effect right there, which I'll gain 20% more armor right there. Once again, you'll probably never be in your armor, but it's nice to have. Increased gear recharge rate by 50% and lowers gear damage by 20% or negative 20%. Um, you like your gear to recharge faster. As far as gear damage, I'm not worried about gear damage because I'm using my uh, Winter's Wrath just to freeze. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really care about it doing damage. My shotgun is my main damage. Um, right now, this is bugged. The, the Gunslinger's Mark is bugged, so hovering increases all weak point damage by 0% right now. Hopefully that gets fixed within this uh, upcoming patch on March 12th. And uh, also that repair plus 25% drop rate. That's very nice. 
once again, you want to get those those health globes, and you also want to get um, uh, ammo for your shotgun, because I think mine only has like 35 backup or like reserve ammo. Token of the pupil, um, increase the number of combo chains by two. Hitting an enemy with L1 increases R1 damage. That's awesome right there. But once again, I did this one for the plus 35 uh, supply drop rate. Vanguard's token, increase armor by 25. This one's a must. A shield break increases damage resist resistance by 10% for 20 seconds. That's huge right there. Definitely need this. Even though we'll never most likely go into armor, we'll always be in shield. But this is nice to have. This has all been tested out in Grandmaster 1, and I will show gameplay of it. I have not tested this out in Grandmaster 2. And um, obviously, this build has a lot of work that needs to be done. But this is just my generic build at first, and then I'll go changing things. I just did this because every storm build online is the same thing. You're, e you're either using your lightning strike with ice shards or using winter's wrath with 10,000 suns. That's it. You don't see anything different, really. A little bit of uh, all lightning builds and stuff like that, but for the most part, everything's the same. So I wanted to try something a little different, and that's why I'm going to share this with you guys. Hopefully, you guys can throw some stuff my way and I'll, I'll be like, oh yeah that does make sense and then i can add it i'm going to be testing this build here and there and seeing what i can change what i can add take out things like that um and then heat sink right here increase the javelin's heat capacity by 10 percent of base capacity to allow the javelin to fly more effectively yeah that's pretty awesome but i like the plus six armor max and then plus 80 percent max on my shield huge right there and then for the last thing i have um the quickening field i chose this one because it has shield plus 40 percent max and my pickup radius is obviously um, bigger. It's uh, plus 43%. If not, I would probably go with um, wind wall. Once it's obviously fixed on the 12th, I would probably go with this one right here. Just to have like, while I'm, if I need to fly away and do something, I could put a wind wall and fly away and have some protection behind me. So yeah. Um, all right, let's jump into some gameplay so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, guys, we have a um, world event going on right here. Destroy destroy uh, Scar Camps. Let's see um, how this build does. Notice my health. My shield going down. Pop them in the face. Land all eight bullets. Shield goes back up. So you could literally just stand in front of all these guys. And if it's too many, overwhelming, boom, you just first start freezing all of them. And now they're, now they're standing still, so you could just start landing all your shots while they stand still. Health will never go down. All right, so we got a turret right here. Freeze the turret, right? Get up close on the turret. <coughs> Look at my health. He keeps shooting me. I'm just bad. I'm just fighting him right here in GM1. Let's get up on this guy right here. Oh, I ran out of ammo. Without hovering, look at look at my uh, my shield. I could literally just battle him without hovering, no shield. I don't have to dodge, just stand right in front of him. Grandmaster one, 
and that we're tanking this way. Yeah, guys, let me know any ideas you guys have, and uh, we'll go ahead and test them out. Thank you.